Uh, good morning, especially Rick and my friend Rich Cotter. Uh, I, we're, we're actually at the home of Rich Cotter, and thanks for putting us up. And uh, we've got a, a, a granddaughter getting baptized uh, about five minutes away, and so we came down to that, and we thought, oh, we better have a meeting. <laughs> so uh, how many people did we have at your house last night? We had a handful of we, we thought we'd talk about Avini while we were here and, and maybe to kind of kick it off. Rich and I, we met 30 years ago yeah. through another company and had a lot of fun for, for quite a few years. Uh, uh, long story short, uh, uh, Rich, uh, you contracted uh, PTSD from that <laughs> but, uh, and, and swore off never never again. But, but uh, oh my goodness, uh, just a, a few years ago, it, it seems uh, it's so quick and so long and everything else, but you, you changed my whole life, Rick. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my we, we, we discovered personally that bad cells don't like uh, Cell Defender. And uh, we did an earlier version myself and oh, what, got, got a reprieve and uh, oh my goodness. And uh, Rich heard about me, so he called me uh, about a year ago and uh, had the same problem, uh, got the same wonderful process with an, an even improved product. And uh, I lo love this stuff. Uh, we, we've joined this club. All of us have a pocket, uh, uh, one of these in our pockets and uh, life-changing. So you've got a new life-changing product that you just announced. And, and so Rick, could you just maybe a little background on, on you and how you came to this? And I, I guess, what would we call this? Uh, uh, a, a functional drink. Uh, you're you're kind of a leader in that. This is not your your new thing. You kind of created that category in a way. So maybe maybe just a little backstory on that, and then uh, uh, why this is so cool. And uh, most of us that are attracted, we we all uh, we we love helping people, making a difference with quality products. And if you're a label reader, you'll instantly fall in love with Rick. So tell us about this new label. <laughs> I'm happy to. Well, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a biochemist. Uh, when I was in uh, college and po graduate and postgraduate, I mostly worked on drug discovery. In fact, in the mid 90s, what I was doing was called computer adaptive drug design using computers to create new drugs. And we estimated that for every hour we spent on a computer, we could save a full year in the research lab by tweaking the drugs and seeing how they bound to different receptors. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I had a I married a wonderful woman who has expensive tastes, so I needed to start making some money. So uh, I uh, started consulting, and I did consult with some drug companies, but I actually wound up working for Rexall Sundown, which at the time was the largest manufacturer of dietary supplements on the planet. So I kind of switched, and so I, even today, I am both a nutritional biochemist and a pharmaceutical biochemist, and I have my my feet in two worlds, which is kind of nice because uh, I see what's going on on both sides of the fence. As a nutritional biochemist for Rexall, I designed well over a hundred products. At one point, I kind of mapped out the products I created and the total sales were in the billions. So I think last count, it was over $3 billion in total sales for products that I created for the Rexall family of companies. Um, but we did a lot of clinical research. We did over 50 clinical studies. Uh, and then over time, I started doing things for myself. And I did create products for other companies, for other network marketing companies. Uh, and then the uh, the big eye opener for me was uh, at Rexall, we were big with fiber, we we're big with sports nutrition, we we're big with general health. Uh, but I was introduced to this concept of zeolite and systemic detoxification in the, uh, in the late 90s, around 97, 98. And uh, that led me to the creation of what we now have as Cell Defender. Uh, and that was a huge deal because there was nothing like it. You know, the, there were, there was this use of zeolites that goes back, you know, hundreds of years in traditional medicine, but there were no products out there that really did what it could do. Uh, the product that I was uh, uh, first introduced to was out of Europe and it was capsules and they didn't micronize the zeolite, they didn't activate it. Uh, they had a sort of sifting process. They call it tribal mechanical activation that says if the, pro if the powder's too heavy, it probably has more heavy metals in it. So use the lighter powder. But it was kind of, you know, very arbitrary. So I came up, it took years and a lot of money and a lot of uh, uh, heartache to come up with my micronization activation process, which led to the product that we have today. And, you know, Dave, you guys said you had the, the benefit of even the earlier versions of the product. 
And it is the only product out there that truly systemically removes toxins and heavy metals from the body to make a cleaner, healthier body. Um, while we're doing that work, and this goes back to 09 and 2010, uh, we had people that were using that version of the product for years. And one of the things they reported is that they were being able to lose weight more efficiently. And at that time, I really wasn't focused on weight loss products. Ephedra had just been outlawed. Uh, so a lot of the whole weight loss industry was kind of turned around because everything had been based on stimulants, especially ephedra. And uh, so I said, well, why is it easier to lose weight if you detoxify? So we started doing some research then and we actually looked at cells, fat cells that had toxins in them. And those cells that had heavy metals in them were harder to break down than the cells that didn't. And so what happens in your body is when you have too many toxins in your body, your body can't get rid of it. The body hides the toxins. It's called sequestration. And it hides the, body, the, the, the toxins in metabolically inert or inactive tissue, primarily fat and bone. And what we found out through that research, that in vitro research, is that once the toxins are in that cell, the cell protects itself because it doesn't want the toxins to come out. It's a protective mechanism trying to help your body. But because of that, you can't get to that fat. You can't break down that fat. And so what we found is over time, as you detoxify, it becomes easier and easier and easier to burn that fat through lipolysis. Uh, add to that, my uh, co-author of my book, Invisible Killers, Dr. Stuart Lonke, who's a pulmonologist in Los Angeles, he started looking at this whole concept of obesogens, toxins that actually increase your risk for producing fat, storing fat, and, uh, and toward obesity and metabolic syndrome. And so we have this whole concept now of toxic obesity, where toxins change your genetics, make epigenetic changes that increase your risk for obesity. Uh, so it just became a, a better and better and better choice that if we're going to move in this direction, if we're going to move into a weight management direction, it starts with detoxification and this concept of toxic obesity. So uh, we launched Avini and the tip of the arrow, the tip of the spear is Cell Defender. It's all about getting toxins out of the body and everything else just complements that uh, and, and the zeolite. Uh, and, but people were talking about a cup. First of all, they wanted a coffee. Um, cause there's lots and lots of companies out there that have coffees. And I'll let you know that I launched the very first, the world's first weight loss coffee. We launched back in 2000. It was called, uh, um, oh my God, now I'm a, a blank. Um, it was, uh, uh, Java lean. It was get lean with the bean, Java lean. <laughs> <laughs> And that was, that was launched in 2000, the very world's first weight loss coffee. Uh, and since then, of course, there's thousands of them. Everyone's coming up with the, all the weight loss coffees. And they primarily rely just on caffeine or other stimulants to try and, and raise your core body temperature, be thermogenic and burn fat. Uh, I found that there's a lot of other things you can do that you can mix with these weight loss products to more efficiently uh, burn fat, block carbs, block the production of fats. And it's also about mental focus and clarity because a lot of people especially if you're on a diet you can get depressed you can get upset you can get off focus uh so being able to be happy not depressed focused while you're doing this is a really really important part of weight management so dave i know i kind of went off on tangents you asked me for background i don't know if i'm talking about what you want me to talk about <laughs> uh, that's, that's just it yeah, yeah. I, in fact you kind of helped formulate more more coffees and and uh uh, you, you, I, guess, I guess this is going to be just a, a whole new breakthrough and yeah, le leading the field once again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if you look at any time in the past, they talk about detoxification as part of weight loss. It was invariably a diuretic or a laxative. And if, I don't know why we have in our heads that detox equals going to the bathroom. Because, because it, it, that's exactly what anytime someone says detox, oh, I'm on a, a detox, I'm on a cleanse, I'm, I'm taking a laxative or diuretic, so Santa based tea or dandelion based capsules that uh, make you lose flows. And it's, it's true, if you're eliminating things from your body, toxins go out with them. But 
we target those by using the zeolite. The zeolite grabs onto those toxins and forces their release. And so uh, we are a systemic detoxifier that day after day after day, we're pulling these toxins out of the body to make you healthier to begin with. And now we know that as you do that, it's going to be easier to manage your weight. And I think this is exciting. Uh, I think also, uh, we said this before, we, we have an older demographic at Avini. Uh, a lot of us are, are people that have been in the industry for a really long time. Uh, and a lot of people do come from companies that did have coffee products or weight and or weight loss products. So this opens up uh, a Vini to them as well to bring them into the fold. But also a lot of people don't drink coffee. And we saw this in the last conference where people were asking about uh, if they could take even the energy shot because they had caffeine in it. And uh, I said, well, there are people that either don't drink coffee or, or through uh, religion cannot drink coffee. So we made it a choice. There's coffee, there's hot cocoa, and there's matcha tea. And I've got to tell you, I, I, I don't want to say I never heard of matcha tea. I certainly didn't know what it was. <laughs> I've never had matcha tea. But when I mentioned to my children who are 19, 23, and 25, they love matcha tea. And I had them try it, and they loved it. So I think matcha tea, the matcha tea choice is going to open up a demographic for us of 20 somethings and 30 somethings, because it is an incredibly good tasting, healthy matcha tea that has all the other benefits of, uh, of detoxification and weight management. Sounds super cool. <laughs> I, I'm going to go see my granddaughter. So, but carry on. I'm glad it's being recorded. All right. So let me, uh, let me talk about what we're trying to do in weight management and the ingredients. And I apologize. I'm doing this like in a car in Tampa uh, while I'm like go traveling for the weekend, but just to go over the uh, actual ingredients. So uh, the, the main ingredient, uh, well, all three products have the same proprietary blend that co co forms the core of, uh, of toxic, uh, of, of uh, dealing with toxic obesity. So the first ingredient is guarana seed extract. Now, guarana is a natural source of caffeine. It's a, a guarana bean. Uh, and it, it, when you take in the caffeine, this is 125 milligrams of caffeine daily from all sources. So that's like a really strong cup of coffee, like a, a cup of coffee you get at Starbucks. Uh, what that does is it stimulates metabolism. It actually raises your core body temperature just a little bit. That's called thermogenesis, and it makes it easier to burn fat. Uh, so that's the whole point of the caffeine to be that stimulant. But one of the issues people have with that is they get jittery. And so we've added several ingredients, but primarily GABA, gamma immune aminobutyric acid, that is uh, basically antisympathetic. It relaxes you. It's adaptogenic. So it reduces stress. And so you can have that caffeine and not be jittery. You know, and it's, it's fascinating because when I first started using adaptogens with caffeine, people were telling me that my product didn't work. Like, why, why do you think it doesn't work? Uh, they said, well, I don't feel it. So you loved feeling jittery. You love feeling like you were going to jump out of your skin. <laughs> you know, they said, if I, if I don't feel like this. It's not working. But let me, I said, let me ask you, do you have energy? Yes. Do you have focus? Yes. Are you losing weight? Oh, absolutely. I'm losing tons of weight. Well, it's working. The whole idea is to allow the thermogenesis to work without feeling jittery, without feeling like you're jumping out of your skin. And it reminds me, if you guys remember many years ago, they used to put menthol in shampoos because menthol would make it tingle on your scalp. And they had commercials and there would be a girl washing her hair and saying, I feel it tingling. And then someone else would say, that means it's working. <laughs> and it had nothing to do with the shampoo. It was just a trick to say you feel something. You know, so you don't need to feel jittery to know that you have energy, that the, the caffeine is working, that the guarana seed extract is working. So we go out of our way to make sure that you can be focused and calm and still be able to uh, have weight management. Um, we've also added citrulline. Uh, citrulline is a, a natural compound. It's a, an amino acid. And citrulline actually works with L-arginine to promote nitric oxide uh, uh, production. And so it helps in circulation. So it'll help move that stuff around the body, better circulation, better uh, use of the compounds in the product. Um, we use N-acetyl-L-carnitine. Now, L-carnitine is an amino acid, 
and it's got lots of uses, mostly for the production of protein, for protein biosynthesis, but the acetylated version, the activated version of L-carnitine, so it's N-acetyl-L-carnitine, the job of that is to literally drag fat across the mitochondrial membrane into the mitochondria in your cells. And for people that don't know, mitochondria are the little energy factories that are in our cells. They take in all sorts of fat and things like that, and they produce ATP. It's the point of respirations where oxygen is utilized in our cells to make energy, to store energy. And ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy currency of your body. You need ATP to get everything done in your body. And so it's kind of cool by adding N-acetyl-L-carnitine, we're forcing more fat into the mitochondria, which provides more energy, but we're making it easier to burn fat as well, because that's a great place to burn your fat. You're actually not just burning it for survival and metabolic rate, you're burning it to have more energy. So it's a, it's a really healthy way to burn fat. Uh, then we've added Garcinia cambogia, which is the natural fruit that is high in something called hydroxycitric acid, HCA. What HCA does in your body is it blocks the biosynthesis of new fat when your body's trying to make new fat. So whenever you eat, uh, whenever you have especially carbohydrates, the body uses the, those carbs and it makes glycogen and glucagon. So it stores energy in the liver and in the muscles, but any extra turns into fat. It gets stored for fat as long-term storage of energy. We want to stop that. We don't want your body making more fat. We want your body just using the fat it already has and burning the fat it already has. So HCA prevents the production of new fat. So we call it a fat blocker, but it's not blocking fat from your diet. It's blocking your body's production of new fat. Then we have a mucinopurines extract. So that's a legume, a bean. Uh, and it's very high in constituents that they're, they're considered adaptogenic, but it increases the body's production of dopamine and serotonin. So it's got a natural source of L-DOPA. And what that does is two things. First, it provides focus and, and clarity of mind, but L-dopamine goes to the substantia nigra in the brain is what actually makes your brain talk to your muscles. And so you have better communication between your thinking and your activity. Uh, and so that's fascinating. That's why, for example, in, in uh, tauopathies like Parkinson's disease, they have to take dopamine because their brain is not properly speaking to their muscles and you need that communication, All right. So, uh, so with mucinopurians, which is considered an adaptogenic product, adaptogenic bean, uh, you're getting that. You're getting more focus and you're getting better communication between your brain and your body. Uh, there is green tea extract in there, which is another source of caffeine, which adds to the total. Uh, but the biggest reason for the green tea is that when you're metabolically active, you create free radicals. That's just a fact. Every time your body does something, it's going to create free radicals as a side product. So you want to make sure you're getting antioxidants. Green tea is very high in epigallocatechin gallate, which is a catechin that's one of the strongest antioxidants on the planet. And that's gonna help soak up the extra uh, free radicals that are produced at high metabolic stress. Um, I already talked about GABA, which prevents the jitteriness. Then we have phazolamin. Phazolamin is a white kidney bean extract. It's called a carb blocker, but people don't understand exactly what that means. So what phazolamine does is it blocks an enzyme called alpha amylase. When we eat carbs, and they go through our digestive tract, alpha amylase attaches to those carbs and breaks them down into simple sugar, which then get absorbed. If you block alpha amylase, less of those carbs get broken down. So less of the carbs from your diet get absorbed. So it helps you mitigate too many carbs in your diet. Now you do need some carbs, you need healthy carbs like fruit from fruits and vegetables, but especially the simple carbs, you try want to try to avoid that because you don't want that spike in blood sugar. You don't want the body laying down or trying to lay down new fat from those carbohydrates. So being able to block some of the alpha amylase activity is a really good idea. And so we call it a carb blocker, but that's the way it works. By blocking alpha amylase, it blocks the production, the, uh, the absorption of too many carbs from your diet. Uh, then there's ginseng extract and We've known about ginseng for, for it's been in the, uh, in, in the dietary supplement industry for the last 50 years, but it is an adaptogen. It's anti-stress. It actually helps give you energy, but at the same time, balance that energy so you don't get too jittery. Uh, so ginseng is one of those adaptogens that's really, really good for weight loss, but it's really, really good for energy. 
Uh, there's also noto ginseng, which is actually a different plant. Uh, but noto ginseng actually tells the body to create more brown fat and less regular fat and actually aids in lipolysis. It tells your body to break down regular fat. So the noto ginseng extract actually helps you utilizing thermogenesis to break down fat. Um, then there's braviscopine. Uh, braviscopine is really interesting because uh, braviscopine is an adaptogen. It's 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 only been used for the last 10 years or so. So it's, it's, it's got tons of studies already. Uh, but braviscopine as an adaptogen uh, promotes mental focus and also healthy circulation. It is a nitric oxide donor uh, like cell citrulline. So you're getting better circulation, especially to the periphery. Uh, you're going to be able to, uh, when you work out, because I talk about supplementation being supplemental to a healthful diet and exercise. So the hope is you're doing something physical, but when you work out, you're going to love having that extra, that, that blood pumping, that extra uh, circulation. It's going to help with everything. It's going to help you burn fat, but it's also going to help you get healthier. Um, and of course there's zeolite in the product, which is my micronized activated zeolite. Now the zeolite that's in the cell defender we micronized to sub one micron all the way down to 459 uh, nanometers, 0.459 microns. And that's what's in the liquid. That's the uh, colloidal suspension. What we put in the fiber, what we put in the energy drink, what we're putting in uh, the uh, weight management products is what we call first pass zeolite. It's not as micronized as what we put in cell defender. So it's still between one and five microns, but if you micronize it too much, you can't work with it as a powder. If it's too small, if you've ever seen like talcum powder or something, if it's too fine, you'll lose most of it. You could sneeze and you've lost, you know, a bucket of zeolite because it just goes up into the air and it's gone. Uh, and so what we do is we have this first pass zeolite and some of it will be absorbed into the bloodstream, but most of it is going to be used in the digestive tract as a digestive detoxifier, but also as a nutritional enabler. As the zeolite binds to toxins that are in your digestive tract and in your diet, it actually allows you through loss of competition by removing those toxins and heavy metals, you get better value from the food you're eating, the supplements you're taking. So you're going to get much better absorption because of the zeolite that's in the product. Um, and then lastly, there's lion's mane mushroom, which is really cool. Uh, we're going to have pictures of all this stuff, but it actually looks like hair. Uh, but the lion's mane, mane mushroom has uh, long been used for diabetes to balance blood sugar levels. And that's something we want to do. Uh, a lot of people, especially with obesity and metabolic syndrome, wind up with either borderline or full-blown diabetes uh, because they're not balancing their blood sugar levels. Now, we already know that the zeolite helps keep glucose in circulation. It's actually a transport molecule uh, because glucose has a dipole moment, has slight positive charge on one end, a slight negative charge on the other end. We believe that the zeolite, while it's in circulation, will drag glucose along with it and prevent glucose deposition, which is what causes all the damage of diabetes. See, with di diabetes, the high glucose isn't the problem. The problem is that the glucose starts to attach to things. So if it attaches to the nerves, it causes neuropathy. If it attaches to the back of the eye, it causes diabetic retinopathy. If it attaches to the blood vessels, it causes claudications, narrowing in the blood vessels. So if we can keep the glucose in circulation, it prevents the damage it can be caused by diabetes. And we've seen that the zeolite does that. And then we know our fiber, the, fi the plus fiber, uh, lowers postprandial hypoglycemia by uh, taking longer for your food to get absorbed. If you take the fiber before meals, your blood sugar will go down over time. And we've already seen just in the few months we've had the product out there, people with lower fasting blood sugar and people with lower HbA1c, which is an average measure of uh, your blood sugar over three months. So add now the lion's mane mushroom to the weight management, you're getting better value from your sugar and an increase in insulin sensitivity. Uh, so you're gonna be better able to use the sugar you have and be able to lower your risk for diabetes. So uh, those, that, those are, this is what makes it the proprietary blend of all three products. That's the, uh, the cocoa, the, um, the uh, matcha tea and the coffee. So uh, I'm sure I have a ton of questions. I don't know, let's see. Well, Rick, uh... Maybe I'll open the line. I have a couple of questions maybe to start out with. Okay. Okay, so 
uh, in the past, when I've heard you um, talk about products that had a lot of ingredients, one of your criticisms would be, are the levels of the ingredients efficacious in the product? So I'm basically throwing your own um, question back in your face. How did you choose and, and, and formulate to get the right amount of all these things in, into the product that you brought us? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a great question. So I've long been a critic of what we call fairy dust. And in this industry, it happens a lot. You get this ingredient that everyone loves. So everyone hears about it in the news. So they put the ingredient in, but it's just a sprinkling, a sprinkling of this, a sprinkling of that. We call that fairy dust. It's not at a dose that's actually going to do anything for you. And that is something I'm absolutely against. If you're going to put something in the product, you have to put it in a dose that's actually going to have benefit. So you can see the proprietary blend is well over two grams of the mix of these things. And every single ingredient is at an efficacious dose. It's enough to actually do something. And I'll give you an example of fairy dust. I love this example. Uh, years ago, a, uh, one of the Centrum products came out, a multivitamin, and they added lutein to it. And lutein had all this research about helping with macular degeneration, age-related macular degeneration. Now, in every study with lutein, every study with lutein, you need at least three milligrams a day to have any benefit whatsoever. The best benefit was between six milligrams and 18 milligrams a day. So they come up with this, uh, this new multivitamin and the commercial was now with lutein and there's lightning bolts. And so there's this booming voice now with lutein. And if you look at what was in it, there were 250 micrograms of lutein. That was one twelfth the minimum efficacious dose. So you know that that's what we call fairy dust. Just a sprinkle of this didn't do anything. But yes, we make sure that if we're going to use an ingredient, I won't bother using an ingredient if I can't put enough in it that's actually going to have benefit. So everything here is at clinically beneficial doses. Okay, so one of the things that really jumped out at me, and you think, okay, uh, here's Rick, he's going to war with some of the biggest issues in humans today, started out with uh, toxic accumulation. But in this particular product, you've really uh, asked us to venture into some of the other major challenges for humans. One of them is obviously that our body mass begins to accumulate as we age. But the one that um, I wanted to ask about, and you didn't dwell on it, and it really is, um, especially in our age group and in a lot of the conversations, I noticed that you brought up um, just in passing the, the pressure of our blood. And, and you, then you had several nitric oxide ingredients. And, and I started thinking um, about the people who introduced you on this call, Rich Cotter and Dave Johnson. Uh, both of them would have high interest in that particular ingredient because they're males and they were threatened with a disease for which the treatment says, hey, if you're not a male, you couldn't have that problem. And here we've got them, you know, fully functional males, but nitric oxide, um, talk, talk about that. Why, and, and, and maybe the blood pressure thing and, and maybe remaining, you know, fully functional humans as, as we age. But no, that's, that's a really good uh, concept. Now, we know over time, our blood vessels become uh, less flexible. And that's a process of both arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. And there are things we can do, simple things we can do that uh, make our blood vessels more, more flexible. Even taking vitamin C, and people think of vitamin C as an antioxidant, but the main function of vitamin C is a cofactor in the production of triple helical collagen. And we need collagen for our hair or nails, but we also need it for our blood vessels. And so uh, what, one of the things we've seen is people that use a lot of vitamin C you'll see a thickening of the walls of their blood vessels, which some people thought was negative, but it actually makes them more stronger, more flexible. Um, so the whole idea is what can we do to promote circulation and keep our blood vessels flexible? And certainly losing weight helps. Uh, it's one thing, and I, I don't wanna get into the whole thing about body image. There's a whole psychological aspect of weight management that we're gonna talk about, because we're gonna have professionals as part of this. We're going to have uh, the psychiatrists, psychologists, nutritionists. They're going to help everybody as we launch these products and as we promote these products. But we know 
that visceral fat, obesity, greatly increases your risk for other diseases, including vascular diseases, including high blood pressure, including uh, uh, congestive heart failure, uh, and atherosclerosis. So we want to do, we want to lose weight, we want to burn fat, but we also want to make sure we promote healthy circulation, healthy blood flow, and that starts with diet, with exercise, with stabilizing blood sugar levels, but also improving nitric oxide content. And if you want to talk about NO, it's really interesting because uh, there are several amino acids, especially L-arginine, that raise nitric oxide in the blood. And nitric oxide is a neurotransmitter. It actually tells the blood vessels to relax. It tells the blood vessels to promote healthy circulation. And uh, actually, uh, um, this is something that... Uh, uh, there was a Nobel Prize that was shared among a couple of chemists to figure that out. The nitric oxide was actually that thing that promoted blood flow. And uh, I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother had angina. They really don't call it angina anymore. Uh, but she had nitroglycerin pills, these little tiny nitroglycerin pills. And what did the nitroglycerin pills do? Because I thought they were explosives as a kid. Isn't nitroglycerin explosive? <laughs> My grandma would take it because it spikes nitric oxide in the blood and relaxes those blood vessels to prevent angina attacks. Uh, but we can do that without nitroglycerin. We can do it without a prescription. We can do it with natural amino acids and things like alcitrulline and proviscopine uh, to promote that healthy blood flow, which, of course, makes you healthier and aids in weight management. A couple other things that I really, really want to get on the because I know a lot of people are going to listen to this and I think it's important. I think, you know, when I work with you and I listen to what you're doing, what you're bringing to us, you want to bring us attributes of a younger organism. One of the things you brought up with the noto ginseng was the, uh, per, you know, the, the tendency to turn um, visceral fat into brown fat. Brown fat burns, visceral fat just takes a ride. And yes. when we're babies, we are plumb full of brown fat. And so uh, as we age, we have less and less and less of it. That's the, the form that you can actually burn. Um, and I, I really wanted to ask you to maybe drive that in a little deeper so we understand the importance of that ingredient and brown fat and what that means to us. Yeah, and we're learning more and more about the difference between fats and fat deposition in the body. Um, and like I said, this was to me a real eye opener when we found out that fat store that stores toxins is harder to break down and it just so happens when we do sequester fat very little toxins are sequestered in brown fat it tends to be sequestered in in uh in uh vacuous fat cells but in regular adipose tissue and visceral fat uh and so um it is interesting. You're right that uh, when we're young and we need uh, that baby fat that we use for energy, and uh, you know, you have kids. I, I I was fascinated. My son Matthew would always get chubby, and then he'd shoot up, and then he'd be skinny and taller. He get chubby, then he get skinny and taller. So it's like we're, they were storing the brown fat that they use for growth, that they use for energy and growth. And you're right. As we get older, we utilize and store less and less and less brown fat which is the perfect fat to store both as glucagon and muscle glycogen uh, because that fat uh, is the best fat that we can use for energy over time as stored energy. Uh, and visceral fat is the more dangerous fat. Uh, it's a fat that can lead to uh, uh, glucose, uh, glucose insensitivity, insulin insensitivity, and metabolic syndrome. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to have more and more data on this. I'm actually working on the white paper for this, but that's one of the topics I'm going to dive into different types of fat. What is good fat? What is bad fat and how the body utilizes the fat for energy? All right. I'm going to try to tie a couple of questions together here, and I don't think anybody's taken you down this path before. So uh, fasten your seatbelt a little bit. You talked <laughs> about uh, ATP being the currency of, of life and that cell respiration I mean, we, didn't, we don't need lungs if we don't have mitochondria, right? Because that's delivering the oxygen there. And I, I'm going to, here's where I'm playing with you a little bit. You could have taught all of us to uh, start smoking cigarettes. You ever notice that people that smoke cigarettes, they get skinny. I think maybe they, yeah. lose, the, they, they lose their efficiency. They can't make. And if you run into someone whose lungs go away, they get skinny too, because you've got to have oxygen to burn and build things. And the, the thing that's a little different here, I want to tie you to another one of your products. And, and, and I've wondered this since you first brought it up, the plus relief. 
and the alpha-7 nicotinide acetylcholine receptor. Yeah. What's the deal with nicotine? What's it doing that receptor? And what does, uh, you know, your, what does our plus relief product do? And how's all of this lead to, you know, better respiration? I love it every time you start talking mitochondria, because I, I know that's where, <laughs> I know that's where we're going to burn brighter if we're going to burn brighter. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about that. Anything that feeds the mitochondria is, is good for fat burning, is good for the heart. Uh, we talk about CoQ10, ubiquinine, uh, is absolutely necessary in the electron transport chain that feeds the mitochondria and creates energy. And uh, when you look at muscle cells, especially <clears throat> cardiac muscle has 10 times the mitochondria in it than skeletal muscle. Because skeletal muscle is, I move sometimes, I don't move other times. Cardiac muscle your heart is beating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three, you know, 52 weeks a year, because if your heart wasn't beating, you'd be dead. And so it has 10 times the mitochondria to make sure there's always a steady supply of energy, 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 energy. So you are, you are right. Um, so let's just uh, step back to, uh, to the Cobra venom and the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So acetylcholine receptors are one of the primary receptors in the central nervous system that allows nerve conduction to take place. Those receptors open up ions, mostly sodium and uh, potassium calcium ions, we go through the different receptors, and that starts the wave of depolarization down the nerve. Those receptors are activated by acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that turns those, those receptors on. Those nerves, those receptors can actually be inhibited or activated either by muscarin or nicotine. So the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors are primarily on the muscles. The nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are primarily in the central nervous system. And so we call them nicotinic, not because the nicotine is a natural thing, but the nicotine can activate those receptors. Okay, so, uh, uh, and that's what happens when you smoke. And that's why smoking is physically addictive because the, that nerve transmission occurs more readily when you're smoking. And when you stop smoking, your body's not used to that and it starts to shut down. You get poor, poor nerve transmission and you feel wrong because you're used to that stimulate, you know, you're used to that nicotine. Um, so I'm not saying, uh, I'm, I'm not saying to smoke, <laughs> obviously, um, but the fact is that that's what's happening at those receptors. Now, what Plus Relief does is it doesn't activate the receptor. It doesn't block the receptor. It's not an antagonist or an agonist. It's a modulator. So it allows those receptors to work steadily and efficiently. And the reason it works to block pain is because pain is a big signal. Pain, pain's a big signal that goes through the nerves. And when you modulate those receptors, it cuts big signals down, it truncates the signal, so it becomes manageable. At the same time, we found that some people that have loss of nerve uh, conduction actually have improved nerve conduction on the plus relief. So I told a story about a friend of mine that when he was nine years old was hit in the face with a softball and it cracked his orbital, broke his cheek, and he, he had nerve damage in his face where he did not feel his cheek I think it was his left cheek for many, for a year since he was nine years old. And so he's in his fifties now, started using the plus relief. And within a few weeks, he couldn't believe it. That sensation had returned to his left cheek. He was actually feeling his cheek again. So that now, because we were modulating that signal, small, small signals were amplified while big signals were truncated through that modulatory process. So I don't know if that was what you were trying to get to, but uh, that's how those receptors work. Well, I know you're wanting to create a moment where all of us make a decision to be cleaner and healthier. And it's pretty much what you're always, you know, asking us to do. And, and so I, I know there's people in the group that are still smoking. And I know that there's people who are still, you know, uh, probably all of us could, could improve in one way or another. And, and I know that this moment, this challenge is designed to create that moment. And I think that's what you're asking of us and probably asking of yourself as well is to be the ultimate version of yourself because you know we have an opportunity to do, do something gigantic here with Avini and we're gonna need the best of us, especially starting at the age we're starting. And so yeah. that's kind of what I wanted to say. And I, I know I hogged a few of those questions, um, but I, I maybe open it up and I'm gonna be quiet now and you take what you can find. Yeah, 
No, you're you're right. The older you get, the harder it is to manage weight, to lose weight. And then we have, um, I borrow a term from physics called error catastrophe, E-R-R-O-R, error catastrophe, which in physics and in any physical environment, small errors will build until a catastrophic event occurs. And so the plan is with anything, with any piece of equipment, with anything you're working on, you try to prevent or eliminate the small errors. The body, the same thing happens. Small errors will build until a catastrophic event occurs. Principally, those small errors tend to be any, uh, tend to be oxidative stress, where metabolic, uh, metabolic events create free radicals and that leads to atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, and those small errors build and build and build until a catastrophic event occurs. And in the body, the catastrophic event could be a heart attack, a stroke, cancer, uh, or some other major disease. And you can see that it was these small errors over time that led to that. So what do we need to do? We need to prevent those small errors. We need to fix things as we can. Fix them, fix them, fix them. We get healthier, healthier, healthier. And then that catastrophic event will never occur. So we talk about testimonials and I say the best testimonials are the ones you're never going to hear. It's the cancer that didn't happen, the stroke that didn't happen, the heart attack that didn't happen, you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, senile ataxia that didn't happen, the mental, the, the tauopathies, the alphaopathies that didn't happen because we kept people cleaner, healthier, uh, and, uh, and better functioning. Uh, so I'm sure that's, uh, that's my, my, that's my soapbox speech, but that's, uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to get into. And especially as we're older, we're actually starting late if you're just starting now, but there's still hope. We know that using the zeolite is going to clean you out. It's going to remove toxins, it's going to make you healthier and taking these other products are going to help as well, uh, building a better you. So let's see, um. I'm going to answer some of the questions. Like someone asked about flatulence with the fiber. Uh, remember that flatulence is not caused primarily by fiber. It's caused by bacteria. So what happens is you have dysbiosis. You have bacteria in your gut that is eating the fiber and producing gas as a side product. So we always talk about probiotics and prebiotics to try and balance the gut, uh, gut uh, biome. And we do that. We add an ingredient called inulin, which is a chicory extract that feeds healthy bacteria and helps to feed unhealthy bacteria. So that actually cuts out the gassiness, the bloat, and the flatulence that no, most people normally experience when they eat any fiber, whether it's brand cereal or a fiber supplement. Now, if they are having that now, it's because they have dysbiosis, and it's just going to take a little bit of time to balance that. The inulin will do that over time. So have them can continue to take it, understanding what's happening. They have these, these gas producing or fermenting bacteria, and you're going to defeat that over time with continued use of the product. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked about caffeine causing bladder control issues. So it is true that one of the side effects of stimulation, not just with caffeine, but with yerba mate, with uh, citrus arantia, uh, so with, with synephrine, when you take stimulants, it tends to weaken sphincters. Okay, so this is true. Say you have acid reflux. The sphincter right above the stomach loosens, weakens, and acid moves up in your esophagus. And caffeine can actually weaken that. So one of the things people say if you have acid reflux is don't drink coffee. And people, people come to me, well, because coffee is so acidic. It's not about that. It's not about the acidity of the coffee. It's the fact that the caffeine weakens that sphincter. So it can't hold the, the acid down. It comes back up. We've actually mitigated that risk with the GABA and with the L-citrulline. Uh, we, we've actually uh, improved that circulation. So the sphincter should stay strong. So that's one of the reasons we put these anti-stimulant or adaptogenic products in with the, uh, the formula, because that should mitigate any risk of bad sphincters, which includes the sphincter at the top of the stomach, but also they talk about the bladder. They lose bladder control when they drink uh, caffeine. So they should be able to use these products. Um, and I, I, would re I would recommend they at least try it and see what happens. Uh, but my, my guess is that they, they should be able to use the products because Going on. Okay, I'm trying to get uh, back to questions. I've actually never done this on my phone before. Uh, how many hours before bed would I stop using the product? Um, yeah, I, I understand that uh, it does have caffeine, it is stimulant, 
I usually don't recommend taking any stimulants after say around five or six o'clock uh, because uh, well, it depends on when you go to bed, but you want to take it at least three to four hours before bedtime. So you're not too jazzed up and you can actually get a good night's sleep. Um, So let's see. Um, inflammation, joint pain, flexibility does help mobility and sleep. Well, I mean, uh, we don't have anything <laughs> specifically for um, for flexibility, uh, but the plus relief is incredible as an anti-inflammatory and an analgesic. So that's the Cobra Venom product. We have the oral spray and the topical gel. So if you have joint pain, if you have uh, stiffness, then you should be using the plus relief because that. Uh, that's going to help with pain and inflammation. And it's uh, incredible. It's safe. It's all natural. Um, what age can someone use it? Could a 12 year old use it? Uh, okay. So we're, I, I'm assuming we're talking ba basically about the, um, you know, guys, could you answer this? You say uh, right now it says Dave Johnson would like to answer this question live. Do you want me to answer the question live or just Dave want to answer the question? No, go ahead. Please go okay. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it says he wants to answer the question live. So uh, I don't mind going through and answer questions. So uh, so it is uh, normally we say um, caffeine has issues with uh, with people under the age of 16. Uh, and we usually try to have uh, less caffeine. Uh, this is, like I said, 125 milligrams of caffeine, which is like a cup of coffee. I would not have a problem with a 12 year old using it once a day. Um, certainly I don't want them using it two or three times a day where, uh, someone who's an adult, I would have no problem with it if they wanted to take more of it. Uh, but certainly if you have an obese child, the obesity is far more dangerous than the caffeine that's in the product, any potential issue with the caffeine. Uh, so you do want to make sure that, uh, they have weight management, especially as they're younger, as Dr. Lonke talked about at the conference, obesogens cause these epigenetic changes, especially when we're younger. And those changes can follow us for the rest of our lives. So the younger we can start working on weight management and healthy lifestyle, the better. So if you do have a 12 year old that needs weight management, then they can certainly use the product. And, you know, we have cocoa. They certainly like that if they don't want the coffee. Um, someone asked about smokers and zeolite uh, reducing, let's see, reducing the habit. Um, so, it's interesting, you know, uh, we, when you smoke, there's a lot of issues with smoking. We talked about nicotine, just as nicotine affects those receptors. But the biggest issue with smoking are the toxins we absorb, especially uh, heavy metals. Cadmium is very high, not only in cigarette smoke, but even in secondhand smoke. And the ZLA is going to remove those heavy metals, remove those cad that cadmium as it cleans out your body. Uh, it's going to help move things along. And what we see with smokers, especially, if you guys don't know how this works, uh, our bodies, our lungs uh, produce mucus and the mucus, the little hairs in our, uh, in our uh, trachea move the mucus up and that moves toxins out of our air, our, our, our windpipe and out of our lung area. And then we basically swallow it. So when the mucus comes up, we're swallowing that. It goes in our digestive tract where we eliminate it. When you smoke, that little cilia, those hairs get paralyzed. And so the mucus gets stuck in the trachea and toxins can actually start to attach to that mucus. When you stop smoking and the cilia gets released, it's not paralyzed anymore and starts moving up. That's where you see the smokers are hacking, coughing, and they complain. They say, I didn't cough this much when I smoked. You know, so they think that quitting smoking was a bad idea because now they're coughing, coughing, coughing. Well, that's because now that silly is moving. All that stuff is trying to come out. And that's a good thing. That's uh, now you're getting all that crap that's stuck in your trachea. You're getting it out, out of your windpipe and out of your lungs. And the zeolite certainly helps with that because the zeolite, so anything that gets absorbed is going to be removed systemically. And it's going to help detoxify and certainly should help you uh, reduce cravings as you quit smoking. Um, can I mix the fiber with my coffee? Absolutely. You can mix the fiber with anything. Think of the fiber as food 
uh, like the healthiest bowl of cereal you ever have. So you can mix the fiber with anything else you want to mix it with. I will say that taking it in 68 ounces of water, one full scoop, one level scoop of the fiber before meals is the best way to take it because it's going to have all those effects of improving satiety, giving you a full feeling, activate those ghrelin receptors. So you feel satiety. Uh, you feel, uh, you feel like you don't need to eat anymore. That's going to make you feel that much better. Not to mention it's going to help reduce, uh, it's going to take longer to absorb your food. So it reduces postprandial hyperglycemia. So you get better value from your food. It's better absorbed over a longer period of time. Um, let's see. With the chocolate, how much milk is it? Will milk sense of allergic people be able to drink it? Yeah, it, it is a Dutch cocoa. So there's a little bit of dairy, but it's very little. I am lactose intolerant and I've taken it fine. I didn't have any issues with it, uh, but I, I don't have a dairy allergy. I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, so uh, my guess is they shouldn't have a problem with it. It is very little, just part of, uh, as part of the Dutch cocoa. Um, and then heart palpitation with coffee. I already said this with the GABA, with the Braviscopine, we're balancing that out with the adaptogens. So normally when you feel jittery, when you drink coffee, you should be able to take these products and not feel jittery. So you should be able to use these products. Uh, and then someone asked uh, on top of that, the cocoa and migraine. So yeah, so th th there is, so, uh, I always tell people to get migraine headaches to keep a journal because there are triggers and chocolate is a common migraine trigger, but that's because of the PEA, the phenylethylamine that's in the chocolate uh, and especially also dehydration. So one of the biggest triggers to any headache is dehydration. So you want to make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Uh, and so if you're drinking plenty of water and you still get uh, a migraine attack from the, the chocolate, it's probably the PEA. There's very little PEA in this product. Uh, because it's just a Dutch cocoa extract. It's not, it's not a lot of dark chocolate. Uh, it's really just for the flavoring. That's why when I talk about the benefits of the product, I didn't talk about the benefits of dark chocolate. That's not what we're talking about with this product. We're talking about the benefits of the proprietary blend, the weight management blend. Uh, so my guess is uh, if you get migraine headaches from chocolate, I don't think you're going to have an issue with this. But I would also recommend drinking plenty of water to prevent uh, uh, those headaches you get from, from dehydration. What's the best time of day to take this product and how often? Um, so we're recommending once a day. Uh, for basic weight management. And when you would normally drink a cup of coffee or a cup of cocoa or a cup of tea, just replace it with this product. So that becomes a replacement for what you're, you were normally doing in your routine. Uh, you could certainly use it twice a day. I really don't recommend more than twice a day when you're in a weight management program, because that's now you're getting about 250 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is a great kind of solid upper dose. Um, of course, there are people, I know people that can tank four triple espressos and not have an issue. So everyone has their own caffeine tolerance. But I think once a day is probably going to be plenty to, for most people to meet their goals. If someone wants to accelerate their goals, you can do twice a day. Um, let's see. How much before eating should we take the drink? It really doesn't matter. Uh, there aren't any kind of... Uh, 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 contraindications. Uh, some with AFib, I kind of already talked about that uh, with the GABA, with the Braviscopine, with the citrulline, we're balancing those issues with the adaptogens. So it, it shouldn't make you feel jittery. It shouldn't cause any issues because of those other ingredients. So uh, I can only say try it and, and see if it works for you because it should with the, uh, with the adaptogens that we've added. Um, how does clinoptilide affect absorption of good minerals and vitamins? That's one of my favorite questions. So clinoptilide has been used in animal feed for basically about 100 years. And it was primarily used to prevent uh, aflatoxicosis, aflatoxin damage to pigs and cows that got, it, uh, got uh, fungus in their food. Um, so farmers in the 70s and the 80s were concerned. They said they knew that the zeolite was removing toxins but did the zeolite actually remove good stuff? Was it removing calcium, magnesium from the animals that they were feeding the zeolite to? And so there were huge studies conducted in ruminants, goats, cows, and sheep, where half the animals got the zeolite and half the animals did not. And the results were surprising. Not only did it not reduce the healthy minerals in those animals, it increased 
the healthy minerals and the atoms. They had higher nutritional status with the zeolite than without. So what we found is happening is not only is the zeolite not removing the good stuff, but by removing the bad stuff, it lowers competition for absorption. Because just like the body is trying to absorb calcium, calcium is a plus two charge. It's also absorbing lead. Just as the body's absorbing uh, uh, magnesium and phosphorus and sodium, potassium, it's absorbing cadmium and arsenic and tin and bismuth and aluminum and antimony. And they're all in competition for absorption. As the zeolite pulls out those heavy metals, you get better nutritional value for the food and the supplements you're taking. So I talk about the zeolite not just being detoxifying, it's also a nutritional enabler, getting better value from your food and your supplements. And that's really important, especially in these products. Um, pre and stomach condition, fiber aggravates. Yeah, L listen, uh, the, the question is whether or not he needs to take the fiber for the weight management. We talk about the best trilogy of products you can use the trio of products you can use for weight management and toxic obesity dealing with toxic obesity is going to be the cell defender the plus fiber and then one of the new trim science products but if you're sensitive to any one of those certainly you don't have to take all three uh you're go and we found out that with the zeolite alone you can actually help with weight management especially if you're trying to lose weight if you're eating a healthy diet if you're working out if you're 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 physically active the zeolite's going to help you lose weight it's going to help you burn fat by removing those toxins and reducing toxic obesity uh, so you can certainly use the zeolite and then pick one of the trim science products and you're going to have benefit um, let's see it says contribute to adrenal fatigue okay so understand what adrenal fatigue is. So, uh, and there's lots of definitions, but the fact is your adrenals are responsible for metabolic rate. The adrenal glands make TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. They balance your metabolism and tell you how much energy you're gonna burn over what period of time. And adrenal fatigue basically occurs when that gets overstimulated. Uh, so that's when people drink a lot of caffeine, a lot of stimulants. And then at some point, stimulants don't work for them anymore because now their adrenals aren't working properly. And that's what adaptogens are for. Things that are adaptogenic to stress that are anti-sympathetic. And you're, you're going to hear me talk about that a lot. I talked about that from stage. So uh, uh, let's use Rich as an example. Okay. <laughs> so Rich, I sneak up on you and I say, boo, what happens? I, uh, I uh, respond with, with surprise. Yeah, you jump, okay? You're surprised. That's, right. That's called your fight or flight reaction. I've shocked you. I've surprised you. I've scared you. So now your body needs more energy to either turn around and fight or turn around and run away. That's fight or flight. That's caused by the sympathetic nervous system. And what happens is your calcium goes in your muscles. Your muscles tighten up your respiration increases, your core body temperature goes up. There's over 70 different reactions that happen in what they call a cascade that happens because of the release of one microgram of adrenaline. So that's what happens in the body. That's a cascade reaction. So what these adaptogens do is they're anti-sympathetic. They prevent that stuff from happening. They relax you. They make sure that you don't get jittery. You don't get jumpy. You don't tighten up. You know, so all those sympathetic reactions are are nullified or or mediated and modulated by those adaptogens. And so uh, I don't think you're going to see any issue with adrenal fatigue with these products because of the adaptogens. Um, someone asked about caffeine and deadly cells. I'm sure they're talking about cancer. Um, yeah, it's really no. You know, the um, the the biggest issue with caffeine, I'd say with cancer, especially chemotherapy patients, is that chemotherapy does cause nausea. And by relaxing those sphincters, like I talked before, you're, it's much easier to have nausea and to have to regurgitate. That's the biggest issue. Uh, caffeine itself is incredibly healthy at low doses. In fact, there's lots of studies that show that uh, low dose caffeine reduces risk for Parkinson's, for Alzheimer's, it reduces risk for certain cancers. So there's lots and lots of studies that show how low dose caffeine is incredibly healthy for you. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, okay, so we talked about using energy for weeks and, and then stop taking for a period of time. Okay, so are you talking about, Jennifer, are you talking about the, 
the uh, plus energy or are you talking about the trim science that we're launching now? Okay, I don't know. So uh, certainly we have the plus energy and the plus energy can be used whenever you want a shot of energy. Uh, there's not going to be any kind of uh, uh, learned body reaction to using the energy, even if you're using it on a daily basis. So you can certainly stop it when you want to and start it when you want to. You're not going to have a cumulative effect. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so th that's the point of the plus energy, which is why we don't sell it as a month supply. We sell it as a six pack. It's the product you want to use whenever you want an extra shot of healthy energy. Um, and then uh, Julie asked about the alkaline Dutch coat pro process. Like I said, it's very little cocoa. It's very little chocolate. This is, and I hate to say it, but it's not really a coffee. It's not really a matcha. I mean, there is matcha tea, there's coffee, there's cocoa but we're not making any of the claims based on the coffee, based on the cocoa, based on the matcha tea. All the claims are based on the adaptogenic proprietary blend that contains the zeolite and the other adaptogenic uh, products. Uh, so it's not like when people have a dark chocolate cocoa and they're making all the claims based on the dark chocolate extract. Uh, I hate to say that the cocoa is really the, just the flavor because it does have cocoa in it, but it is a healthy process. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, it's not cold pressed cocoa. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, extraction process. It's uh, mostly ethanol based. Um, uh, but uh, the fact is, you're getting a nice healthy blend of the Dutch cocoa from the, from natural cocoa beans. Um, but I, I, I really it's it's hard for me to talk about the benefits of matcha tea, the benefits of cocoa, and the benefits of coffee because that's not what we're talking about here. This is a supplement that happens to be coffee, tea, or cocoa. And it's really just your choice of what flavor you want to get those adaptogens, to get that packet of the proprietary blend uh, for weight management. So I hope that answers the question. I don't want to sound like I'm speaking uh, in a circuitous fashion. Um, so it sounds like, yeah, cer certainly, listen, uh, there's lots and lots of benefits to these ingredients these adaptogens. There's better blood flow, better blood sugar utilization. Uh, and certainly, even if you don't have to lose weight, these are great products to take. These are healthy products to use. But certainly, we have a society where 70% of Americans are overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. So uh, the, the majority of Americans need to lose weight. They, to be healthier, to live a longer, healthier, happier life. And so there's no shortage of people that need this product. <laughs> but certainly, like you said, even if you don't need to lose weight, even if you don't need weight management, these are healthy products that anybody can benefit from. I think I got through my list. Did I get through my list? Yes. That's, a, that's, that's great. Uh, you know, Rick, uh, I feel like I've attended a college course. How many credits did you say this was? <laughs> This is, this is a four credit biochem class. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, it seems to me like one of the things that differentiates what we're doing here with trim science is, is the subject of toxic obesity as compared to just weight loss, like so many other people do. We're, we're really getting at a root, root cause of, of uh, obesity that most people aren't aware of uh, by removing the toxins along with uh, the other efforts uh, to lose the weight. Uh, yeah, and I and think I just, that's 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 vital because the cell defender, the zeal, is the tip of the spear when it comes to a VD health. We have to. So on on my screen, you've frozen up there for a second, Rick. Um, it, it appears we it appears we've uh, we've lost you there. Is it the same for you, Chip? <clears throat> yes, he did freeze. So. Okay. Um, well, I think we got a lot of. I think we got a lot of good out of him today. Maybe, maybe, maybe he really did. Maybe we hit the we hit the end of the uh, mental activity there. I don't know, but that, that was great. I gosh, I just soaked up every minute of it. I hope hope everybody else did too. Well, I'm I'm just so grateful for the Trim Science products. I think they're going to be they open up a whole new demographic as well for us and uh, give us another tool to, to help us become a better version of ourselves, which you're so fond of saying, Chip. So with that, I think we're gonna bring this meeting uh, to a close. We don't wanna thank you, uh, Chip, for being with us and uh, also Rick for the time he has spent. 
and uh, let's let's go for it, like Dave would say. <laughs>